Hey, this is Mikey Borup for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this small world out of just ordinary stock footage. Now this is a time-lapse tilt shift miniaturization world kind of technique, but I didn't use a time-lapse footage, I just used normal stock footage. And so let me show you how to do that. Let's first create a new composition, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my stock footage, I'm going to drag that and drop it into this little video frame, and it'll create a new composition. And this isn't a very long clip, it's just over 8 seconds, almost 9 seconds. And the type of footage you're going to want to find that works best is you need wide shot footage that shows a lot of area, you know, all the objects and the people are really small, and then you also want it to be locked down on a tripod. Just because with time lapses, most of them aren't moving, and so if your footage is moving, make sure it's pretty subtle. You don't want handheld footage for this, of course. So on a tripod or on a dolly, a slow dolly shot, those are going to be the type of shots that work because those are the kind of type of shots that people can do with the time lapse. They're not doing handheld shots with the time lapse. So in order to prepare this, let's go in and let's uh, speed it up first because this is obviously too slow for time lapse. So let's go in, layer, time, time stretch. And how the time stretch works is if I want this to be quicker, then I need a stretch factor lower. So 25% of the speed. So if I want it four times faster, then I'm going to hit 25 in there and it's going to be four times faster or 120 or one fourth of the length. So now that's going faster and that's about how fast I'm going to be doing this look. I do want to come in here and change my composition settings so it's not too long. Let's go in here and this is now two seconds, five frames. Now the next thing you want to do is you're going to want to pre-compose this. And hopefully I won't do too many pre-compositions, but you need to do this in order for certain effects to apply to the next ones and different things like that. So you can either pre-compose or maybe add adjustment layers. I choose to do pre-composing. So I'm going to pre-compose this, Command Shift C, and I'm going to just call this my footage. Make sure you move all the attributes. Click OK. And now that I have that pre-composed, I'm going to add an effect in time, and it's called Posterize Time. And what this is is it changes the frame rate, but keeps it playing at the same speed. So right now, my composition is set at 30 frames a second, but if I want to be at 10 frames a second, that means each frame will play three times before it goes to the next one. And that's going to make it feel a little bit more like a time lapse because it's a little going to be a little bit more jerky. Now, the next thing we want to do is to create that tilt shift look. And this is really easy. We're going to need to create a new solid. So Command Y or Control Y, and let's make this a black solid. The way I like to do this is by adding a light sweep, generate light sweep, and let's take the edge intensity down, and let's make the width more, and let's bring the intensity up to at least 100, because that means at 100 it should be exactly white in the center. Make sure the color is white. And I also, what I like to do is then after I do that light sweep, I'm going to go to effect and add a fast blur and click on the repeat edge pixels just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And then from here, I can just change my width or my intensity. And again, this one you're going to need to pre-compose as well. So Command Shift C, and I'm going to call this my mat. And let's go ahead and stick that down at the bottom. Now on top of this footage, let's do another effect. Let's go into Blur and Sharpen and go to the camera lens blur. And it's going to start to blur immediately. Um, some settings you want to do on this. First off, right here where it says Repeat Edge Pixels, click on that. Next it says the Blur Map. Let's set that to the mat. And you can see it's blurry in the center, and I want to invert that. So now it's sharp in the center and blurry on the edges. And then we can come in and let's increase the blur radius. And you can see that's starting to look kind of how we had the example. You don't want to go too overboard, but you want it nice and blurry, just focused in the center. And the reason for this is it makes it look miniature is because when you take photos or you take video of large things, everything's going to be in focus. If you're going to try to do this with a model and then you're going to be focused on this one thing, just the way the cameras work, it's going to put more things out of focus. So if you can take a big, large photo like this and make it so everything's out of focus, it's going to look like a small photo. I also like to come in here and mess with the gain a little bit just to kind of change things up a little bit. Now what I can do from here is I can now go into my mat and we can kind of 
change the direction of that. Uh, not quite that much. About 86. And that's looking pretty good. What I can also do is with this shot, I want everything back there to be really blurry because it's far in the background. So what I want to do is I'm going to just select my pen tool with nothing in the timeline selected and it's going to create a shape layer. And so I'm just going to not be very exact about this. Kind of a black shape for the background here. I'm going to take this, let's cut that, go back into my mat and paste it up onto the top there. And let's add a slight blur to it so it's going to mesh in a little bit better. And so when I now come back into my shot, this in the back is going to always be more blurry. I can even come in and let's make this width a little bit wider. So there's going to be more of a distinct line where that goes blurry. And you can see back there is a lot more blurry than just right here. Let's maybe even crank this a little bit more. And you can just come in and just make some adjustments. And everything will come across. See, now there's a lot more white in the center here. And so everything's more in focus. Let's bring the intensity down. We can even maybe change this to smooth or linear. See if that does anything. Bring the width in. And just kind of mess around with the settings until you get it to, to look the way you like. Make sure you keep the intensity over 100, though. Otherwise, you won't have a spot in the center that is focused. So I think I like this on sharp. Let's go in and bring this down a little bit. OK. So there is the miniaturization tilt shift look. Now let's go in and add some words to this. And when you're adding words, you want the words to be in focus. So you want them to be, if I move this up here, you want them to be in line with this white. But also, if we remember, we want the words to be above the car so the cars aren't slamming into them. So you need them to be not quite where this white is, but a little bit above it. As if the, you know they had legs, they would land right where this white was. So let's just use this as a guide. Small world. And let's make this 3D. Go into the rotate. And then move it up. We can scale it from here. And then let's move this mat back down to the bottom. And then now that should be looking about right. To make this maybe mesh in a little bit more, we can come in and add a new light, just a spotlight, and let's move it out. Now, if you wanted to add maybe a little bit of depth to this, there's a couple ways of doing that. But really, at this point, the easiest way is to duplicate the footage, go in, change these bottom layers to black, and then let's change the Z space just ever so slightly. So that's how you do it. Now remember the key things with this are, first off, you want to make it go faster. Second, you want to use the posterized time to make it look more like stop motion animation or a time lapse. And then the third thing is to use the camera lens blur in order to create that tilt shift. And if you remember, I used a black solid and then the light sweep to create the gradient map. Let's render through this so we can see what the final looks like. So that's it. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Just put them down in the comments below, and I can answer your questions for you. Again, this is Mikey Borat for PremiumBeat.com, and if you have a need of some great stock audio, some music, some sound effects, please go to PremiumBeat.com. They've got a great selection and really good stuff. Also, be sure to check out their blog. They've got lots of great tutorials like this one and other things as well. So check it out and enjoy the video and we'll see you next time.